Yes, Hickok 45 here, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee. Yes, the home of everybody you might want to think about. Yeah, especially Alvin York, Jeff Quinn, Adopted Home, Johnny Cash, Alan Jackson, Loretta Lynn. We could go on all day long with famous singers, couldn't we? <laughs> but we can't do that. We have too much to do. We've got to shoot. So let's shoot a little 44 Magnum through this lever gun. One, two. And let's blow up a two liter. Wow, we got a plate and a two liter. One shot. Pretty good. How about that paper? We got a bullseye with one shot. Good old 44 Magnum. Yeah, I got this ammo from Federal Premium, which is at a premium these days, isn't it? We appreciate Federal Premium's help because we're sending their bullets downrange. On the gong, in fact. Got there pretty fast, didn't it? <laughs> How about a propane tank? <laughs> Woo! How about a bowling pin down there? <laughs> Man! <laughs> Got it. All right. So, uh, yes, Hickok 45 here. And you know, if you know firearms, there's an empty case under the hammer right now, under the in front of the firing pin. That's how I handle a uh, lever gun and a bolt gun. Can't do that with a semi-automatic, can you? But with a manual operated firearm, it's a uh, it's the common method uh, that I use to just to keep it safe, you know? Now, I, I depends on what I'm gonna do. Now, if I'm going to uh, mess with the gun a lot or I'm gonna show you how it works or something, I need to unload it because uh, I can't work the action. That's the only thing is you cannot work the action. Totally safe unless you work the action, work the bolt, work the, the lever, okay? So, for right now, it's in good shape. And you saw the table. I went back to, I forgot to do that the last week or two, kind of show you what I've got out here. And then the song. Gosh, I caught a lot of grief for not playing the song last week. A couple of people said thank you. <laughs> but mostly, I caught a lot of grief, okay? Uh, I know it's a corny song, but I don't know. Uh, it's nice to have a theme song if it's corny. You know, on these things, messing around, you know. On our regular videos, we don't have an intro right like most people do who are more professional than we are right so uh anyway yeah good to see you all and uh got kind of a cloudy day it's, uh great you know usually uh having to fight sunlight and different things here but uh it's nice that the the powers that be the gods up there cooperated and uh, you might be able to see me better i might look better to you right is that possible can't look worse so uh, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. We're going to shoot some. i got two or three guns out here. Some we're going to do videos with today and uh, later. And uh, in fact, this gun's going to be in a video, uh, this rifle. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. And one reason I brought a lever gun out too, in addition to that video, was uh, you all know, big announcement video. You saw it. The zombie movie is out. Hope everybody has seen it by now. I know you got to buy it. It's not free. What's free? There is no free lunch, right? But anyway, appreciate you that it have. And, uh, uh, you know, I again, so I said in the announcement video, it's not a Spielberg movie. It's a zombie movie, you know, quirky zombie movie. But uh, anyway, uh, so we had a small part in it, and it was kind of fun. But I talked about that. You all know about that. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the lever gun uh uh, today is what I was going to do. But anyway, the movie is out. Uh, again, go to, uh, uh, what is it, uh, strain100movie.com. That's the main site. And then uh, you can link from there to Amazon Prime where it's available right now. And it'll be available in other places uh, as time moves on here. So uh, 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 <laughs> check that out. Um, and of course, Matt's in. I, we, we've been promoting or talking about it, you know, for years, you know, about it. And it, that uh, demolition ranches in there, and different people, Alex, Zadra, and every, and then other folks, and, and some I'm not sure they were not on the set at the same time we were. And there were some other people you might know that were in there. Um, I guess I guess I can't. I don't know. There actually was a, a fairly famous actor that was uh, supposed to be in that movie. I think he was going to play the old man. For those of you who have seen it, that, that uh, really creepy old man that uh, uh, where, where Jesse and, and, uh, and the little girl uh, 
showed up, you know, just before I guess they got to my place, wasn't it? But uh, anyway, it uh, it fell through with that or something, but uh, other obligations. But uh, anyway, uh, it was fun to do it. And the reason I brought the lever gun out here, I'll talk about anything, because if you're using regular ammo in a uh, supersonic ammo uh, with one, it, it'll quiet it down a little bit, but you, know, you still get a fair amount of noise. But with subsonic ammo, it's fairly quiet. I'll, I'll take a shot with that in a minute. So let me go ahead and do it, take a couple shots. You'll see a difference from last week. Okay. Because 45 uh, typically is subsonic. Okay. I'll shoot it into the dirt. See, it's a little difference, right? <laughs> Let's put one on the gong if I can. I probably can't. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little difference, right, when you have subsonic. Now, if I had some uh, hot carry ammo in 45 ACP, uh, probably, yeah, it was going whatever, eight or 900 feet per second, it wouldn't be like that, okay? But that's the nice thing about 45, it, typically your ammo is subsonic, so you don't have to search high and low and find uh, subsonic ammo, okay? That whatever you pick up is probably subsonic, okay? So uh, what I was going to talk about a little bit with the, the lever gun in, the, in connection with the movie, uh, I, I told you all that I chose the, the Henry uh, to take. I had the choice of, of what I'd kill zombies with because originally it was just supposed to be me up on the hill and picking off some zombies and saying, yeah, I got you or something. And that was going to be it and then ended up with uh, a little more part. They saw what a great actor I was, right? Uh, pretty funny. but. Uh, so, you know, I talked with the producer. He said, yeah, bring whatever you want, you know, and uh, whatever you think Hickok would have or use and that sort of thing. Because uh, I was pretty much trying to play, supposed to play myself as much as possible. And uh, I think I told you the gun I was going to take, I thought, hey, a cool gun would be, because, you know, it's a movie. I thought it would be something kind of cool. Uh, the M14 I thought would be cool, not just another AR-15, you know. Uh, so I think the M14 would be cool. And so that's what I was going to take uh, for a while. And I got thinking about it. And then through different conversations, uh, I realized you're not really going to fire blanks. On you they don't use blanks anymore in the movies. If you didn't know that, it's, uh, <laughs> they, uh, it's CGI for the gunfire, and the flames and all that. And so you're not really firing even blanks. Okay. So I got to thinking about it. Being the genius I am, and having uh, graduated from MIT and having taught there after I got my PhD for you know, about 20 years. You believe that, didn't you? No. Uh, no, really, being the genius I am, it occurred to me, okay, uh, I'm going to be firing at zombies and they're going to have a shot of the gun. How are we going to simulate the bolt working you know, on a semi-automatic? You know, what's that going to The bolt's not going to move. And, and I'm shooting at zombies. I, I, I don't know a lot about movie making, but I, I don't know how that would work, how they could, they can't simulate that, can they, you know? And, and so the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, you know, really, a, um, a lever gun or a bolt gun would be better. Of course, lever gun have more capacity. And so I settled on a lever gun. I thought, I told John, you know, I think a lever gun would be the best thing to, to take. It'd be kind of cool. It's something I like, everybody knows that. And the, you know, and you work the lever, and so uh, it's going to be more realistic. You, know, you cock the hammer, the hammer falls. You can see the hammer fall and everything on empty chamber and all that. And then I even got smarter, being the genius I am. I had the presence of mind to take a bag of empty brass because not only would it be more realistic to have the lever and the hammer falling, but how about brass coming out? If no brass is flying out, What's that going to look like, you know? So I took some empty brass in addition to that, which we use, as you can tell from the movie, the brass coming out. Okay. So you just didn't know I was such a genius, right? Pays to think ahead. <laughs> it did. It does. And it did, I think. Because, I, I mean, really, I don't know what they'd have done with a semi-automatic. I could have taken any firearm, but, you know, I think it looks more realistic if you've got the... Uh, brass coming out and you're levering the gun and all that sort of thing. I think in the levering there uh, was a place where 
the gun was actually firing when I was in the downstroke with a lever or something, but by and large, most people aren't gonna notice that. So anyway, uh, that, that's the reason I ended up there with a lever gun. No, I didn't get paid by Henry to take a Henry rifle to the movie. I'm surprised somebody hadn't come up with that. Where are all the, the shill seekers? You know, where are they? All the sellout uh, trolls, where are they? They're, they're usually pop around on, on anything, you know. But uh, uh, that wasn't it either. I really thought, well, that's what going, people are gonna think. So once I decided a lever gun was probably the best thing, then I thought, well, what's the, what would be the best or the best looking lever gun, you know? And so I thought, well, Henry, you know, so anyway. And I think John chimed in with that. The, the Henry has some history in zombie movies, you know, and that kind of thing. And of course the brass frame, yeah, so it just seemed like a logical choice if you're gonna take a lever gun. I mean, I love this gun and I, I, I have several lever guns I just, you know, really, really like, but they don't have the, uh, the look you know, that a, a brass frame Henry has, of course. Uh, a, if I had a, uh, a brass uh, frame, well, all of them are brass frame, but a, uh, a model uh, 66, it, a replica, I would, I, that might have been my choice, because again, brass frame, you know, and easier to load, okay? So anyway, uh, that's the reason the lever gun showed up, because I'm such a genius. You know, I just like to remind you all that every now and then. Uh, <laughs> you saw this in the initial uh, <laughs> uh, scan of the table, didn't you? Oh man, this is my new carry gun, a high point, and I'm going to shoot it, okay? Alright, that's why I have it out here, I need to shoot it. Alright. Forget it, Prince High. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a, a nice thin little. Uh, can you see how thin that thing is? It only weighs, I think, uh, was it four, four and a half pounds? I weighed it, I believe. Yeah, is that right? I got it written down. I weighed it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the uh, the high point, the 45 JHP, and we've got some plans for it in the video, you know, today. So. I didn't shot it enough, and uh, I need to shoot a little bit, okay? Good old high point. Okay, I know, I get in trouble for making fun of them. But uh, how do you not make fun of it? I mean, it weighs like four times as much as that Glock there. <laughs> Let's shoot again. That's why I brought it. I need to, I, I want to be able to hit with it a little bit. Okay, cowboy. <laughs> Let's see if I can hit the gong with this thing. Holding too high again. Yeah, all right. Oh, man. <laughs> what a piece of work. All right. So, and uh, I got it all taped up because uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's hard for me to manipulate the slide on these. You may have noticed from the, uh, that nine millimeter high point video we did where I, I catch it every day. People give me a hard time about being a gun snob. I uh, couldn't work the slide well. It's it, they're just slippery for me. And I talked last week about being able to squeeze a small slide too. Anyway, it's harder with big hands, I think. And uh, this one is slippery as well. So I put some uh, talon grip tape on the slide. I just cut out, and then some talon grip tape. I just put around. I don't have any grips for a for a high point, and don't really need any. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not planning to dress up a high point, but I, I put some around there because the grip is too slick on top of that. So I said, if we're going to do a video with this thing, I want to at least get it where I don't just uh, look totally incompetent with it and like I'm trying to make it look worse than it is, okay? And so I put, went ahead and put grip on it, which I normally you know, don't always do with a gun, just well like this. All right, deer hunters, I guess. All right. So uh, I'm probably running all the deer hunters' hunts, I'm sorry, you know, out here because it's... Uh, Usually it's too late in the day to deer hunt, but when it's overcast, I think I'm not a deer hunter. Maybe you might be, although you're not watching, you'd be out in the woods right now. 
Oh, no, wait a minute. You don't have to watch this while I'm filming it, do you? I, I forget. I forget. Uh, but anyway, uh, whatever I was saying. <laughs> it's probably a lie, whatever I was saying. But, yeah, I wanted, I didn't want to make it look worse than it is. And so I taped it up a little bit. All right? Kind of give it a fair chance. And also make it more fun to handle and shoot. It's no fun struggling with a firearm. It's really not. So, high point. All right, my new carry gun. Oh, man. I, you know, I, I might, I'll get to an age where I can't carry that thing. It's just too heavy, right, <laughs> to, to handle. Oh, boy. Let me uh, shoot this a little bit more, too. Did I tell you all, by the way, a couple of notes? I had someone was asking about my Harley. I know I told you all somewhere back when I was doing Shooting the Breeze, I guess. I did sell my Harley. Uh, I had one for four years for new people. And, boy, there are a lot of new people in the last couple of weeks. Jeez, I think it's like 100,000 new subscribers in the last uh, i don't know two weeks or something or three whatever but uh uh i had a harley uh road king classic for four years john had bought one was riding i rode his a little bit and ah, i gotta have one of these this was years ago probably what six years ago or something so no no seven i was still teaching so it was about seven yeah seven and a half years ago i guess and uh and so I bought one, and I had fun with it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is neat. It is neat getting on it and riding that thing. But I got to where I just wasn't riding it much. It was just kind of in the way. And if you know anything about big motorcycles like a Harley, you need to ride them uh, and, and stay in practice, whatever you want to call it, or, or, or not ride them. You, kind of, you need to go one way or the other kind of thing. And... Uh, and I just was not riding it. Even it would be a nice day, and I'd maybe not have a tight schedule or anything. I could have just hopped on it. And then when I did, I'd hop on I'd, and I'm gonna go for a long ride today. And I'd get out about uh, 20 minutes away, you know, and uh, this is neat, you know, circle around. Okay, I'm ready to head back. I mean, so I, I, it just wasn't like firearms with me, that I was just uh, thoroughly uh, like eaten up with it, like, like a lot of people are, you know, the golfers, Horse people, uh, motorcyclists, you know, you got people, most firearms, need I say, uh, people just really, really are into to that hobby. And, and that's just one I, I, I wasn't really, really into it. It was fun, but there was something about having to put all the, you know, the helmet and everything on and, and really need to have long sleeve shirt, really, probably, and, and pants and, and better shoes than just old sneakers. I know people wear them, and you see people in sandals and everything else, and shorts and a tank top on their big Harley and all that, but it's not advisable. And just getting all dressed up to even ride it, I, it was just, wasn't like hopping on my bicycle where I could just, whatever I've got on, get on it, you know. So uh, the inconvenience of that, and, uh, and then too, if it's even, especially if it's even my gosh, even it's 50 degrees when you're on that thing, that makes it 40. So you got to dress, dress for it. Uh, so I, anyway, all those excuses, I just, I just, I just sold it. But uh, so I thought I'd answer that for some people. Can I shoot this a little bit? All right. Hey, a couple of shots. All right. A couple of quiet shots. This is the same. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I posted the. Uh, the Uzi uh, suppressed woods walk this week. This is the uh, the same suppressor that was on the Uzi. Just changed out the, the piston you know, for 45 instead of nine millimeters. So it's a very versatile uh, uh, suppressor. I, I guess uh, you, it's, it's possible if you have a, uh, a uh, another deer hunter, probably, maybe you're sighting in his rifle, but it's, it's I think it's possible uh, to, if you have a, a suppressor that is is just for nine millimeter, let's say, or smaller caliber, to maybe reduce the decibels a little bit more or something. But then again, I, this thing does awfully well when we're shooting a subsonic ammo in uh, nine millimeter, you know, or this. Uh, it, it, it's great. It's uh, I, so far I really really like this. It's uh, the Banish 45. Let's shoot it. I know people get mad at me when I shoot steel, but I, I've got to shoot some steel. Let me shoot a two liter, if I can hit it. Because <laughs> I can't, my sights are not set up for suppressor, although it's not too bad. I'll bet I can hit that yeller two liter even. Yeah, 
scales go a little bit lower. Oh, now it's hit some steel. That hog. <laughs> I think it's fun to shoot steel. Uh, I'm going uh, I'm to put one on the gong again if I can see it. I need to move it a little bit. That tree's kind of in the way. All right, so let's put a couple on the target. <laughs> How did I know? I just had two left. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, some quiet shooting. Quiet shooting. Yeah, not so quiet with this baby. By the way, this is my Marlin. I hadn't shot it. Yeah, I wanted to get it out for several reasons. We're doing a video where I need a lever gun today and uh, I wanted to talk to you all about my lever gun choice and uh, in the video like I said if I'd had an 80 uh, an 1866 replica probably would have taken it but uh, I guess I don't know uh, the brass was the main thing uh, the disadvantage of course in a real zombie apocalypse which we're sort of in some days, right? These days, uh, some cities is that the Henry might be a little slower to load. Yeah, you know, I would rather have a 66 or one with a, a side gate so I could top off my my magazine. Uh, you know, just keep it fully loaded, right? Don't you love it when a tractor's rolling around? I mean, that's the beauty of living in the country. I mean, you heard somebody, my neighbor shooting. I mean, one might have been hitting a deer. I don't know. Uh, one is probably sighting in his rifle over there uh, or shooting at a deer, I don't know. Got a big John Deere combine going down the road in front of the house uh, and uh, gives me a, another topic. <laughs> now, speaking of cities, you know, I really, I really think a lot of people after this year are probably going to be looking uh, more and more at places like this, you know, to live in if, if they can. I mean, of course, you don't have to have 40 acres. You can, you can find a house in the country, but uh, you know, there's just a lot of undesirable uh, aspects to living, you know, in a crowded city, right? As we know, uh, I mean, I, and I've I've tried. It sounds sweet sound of music. I have been to a lot of cities. Uh, uh, <laughs> obviously, I mean, I've spent a, a fair number of nights trips in New York City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, Miami, I mean, you just name them all, Chicago, I've been to all these places a lot of times, back when I was in publishing especially, and then, you know, conventions, and, and, and since we've been doing this, and, and all over the place, uh, and it's interesting, it is, and it's neat, you know, hitting the, the restaurants, and, and the different, the novelty of it, you know, but you know it's where I still live, right? In other words, they're nice places to visit, maybe. Some of them aren't even nice places to visit now or safe places to visit now at all or live. Uh, but they're interesting places. Uh, some of them are still livable, but uh, don't want to live in them. Don't want to live in them. You know, just, just, I'll just visit occasionally. Yeah. They may do less of that in the future. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I think uh, getting out, and it's, it's, just, it's just nice. A lot of people have no desire, they have no interest in living in a country like this. And I, I understand that you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. You know, some people would love to, but they just can't swing it financially. But you know, I, you might be surprised. I mean, it takes priority. I mean, it's been a priority for me since I was 20 years old to get some land and to, to be out in the country. And yeah, you know, I mean, so it's it's really no more expensive in terms of buying a house or buying some property. You know, you just can't maybe start with a big piece of property, uh, and then you have may have to drive a little more to your to your job. But it's just a matter of priorities, really. So anyway, I was just reminded of that. You know how nice it is being in the country, and and being able to do this. All right. <laughs> Ooh, big old red plate, and we're empty. Yeah, lever gun, nice. Yeah, it's uh, 
<laughs> so anyway, I, I hope you, uh, like I said, hope you've seen the movie, crazy movie, and don't expect too much. It's, uh, I mean, when I say that, I, I'm saying it jokingly. Don't expect uh, a uh, 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 an Oscar-winning performance from me or probably anybody, but it is a zombie movie, and it's kind of fun. It's fun to do and uh, a little violent. Although, you know, my wife watched it, and she doesn't like that kind of stuff, you know, people getting shot up and blood flying and everything. I have to remind her, really, uh, most of the people that were killed or murdered, uh, killed or murdered, were not really murdered or killed in that movie or any zombie movie, right? They're already dead. They're already dead, you know, I'm talking zombies. <laughs> now there's some exceptions, right? Uh, so uh, let me uh, let me cut for a second because I got a phone call I need to take and just in case there's something I need to tell you, okay? Okay, I'm back, yeah. The reason I answered the phone is it was the actual the movie producer, <laughs> and I, I I knew he was going to be calling sometime today, and I thought, well, I'll cut in case or something. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I did because he mentioned that uh, they're trying to we're trying to get that thing on, or he's trying to get it on iTunes, YouTube, and then to be able also to stream from the site, the Strain100Movie.com, and so all that's coming probably next week, you know. So make you aware of that, and then. Uh, uh, then also, I think there's some issues with the cat closed captioning or something, and so with Amazon, so they don't want to do it this week during weekend, but I think next week there'll be a period of time where it might be unavailable uh, while they're fixing some of the fixing some of the closed captioning or something. So just be aware of that. So anyway, uh, enough on the movie. Uh, it's a big deal for us, kind of. So even though it's been a long time, we've almost forgotten about it. It's, it's cool that, that it's out. Uh, first experience with us and uh, what else I will keep you all, all day uh, but I don't want you to miss supper anything else I want to talk about oh man I had a I had a uh, I had a <laughs> topic I mean to talk about a little bit for a while it every time I am on regular TV I'm reminded I, I, some of you are probably the same way maybe it's because we're old guys or maybe it's just because we have a brain. I don't know. But uh, doesn't it just wear you out, some of you, when you're, you, you may be watching a really uh, favorite show. It could be a classic show. You, these channels like what, MeTV in different places, there's a lot of cool old westerns and things, and gun smoke or whatever. So, but the price you pay and that's the way of the world, you know, there's no free lunch. You gotta have the commercials. It's neat that they run Gunsmoke and the Rifleman, some of my favorite Westerns of all time. And, I, and sometimes they're on the Westerns channel, so I don't have to put up with those those crazy commercials, but that's what I'm getting at. The, the onslaught, of, it's not just the onslaught of literally like 12 or 15 commercials back to back. Uh, it's, I mean, it's really hard to watch. If you don't have a, a DVD player, not a DVD, but a DVR. It's really almost, un a lot of things are basically just unwatchable, you know? I mean, my very favorite movie that comes on and I don't have it bought anywhere on DVD or on Amazon or anything. And I see it's on, I don't know what it, you name the channel, TNT or a network channel, MeTV. And I see it's on somewhere like that. And I have nothing to do. And I would really like to see that movie. I'm probably not going to watch it. I'm, I buy it. I'm not going to watch it on there unless, unless I can record it and then watch it later. And even then, the I still think there's almost as much time with the movie, same way with the news programs. I, I, I keep thinking I'm going to write it down and time it sometime. But if you're watching one of the main new, uh, popular news channels uh, or a movie on one of those channels, I'm not sure there's really any difference, the time of commercial and the time the movie's on. I, I mean, really, it's like, okay, seven minutes of movie, seven minutes of commercials. I, it, it almost, it seems like that, uh, and I'm, it's not far off. But anyway, it's not just the commercials, the incredible onslaught of them, but it's the pop culture nature of it, you know. Even when it's 
you know, around a show like Gunsmoke or something. They think all oh, the teeny boppers are watching that. Uh, but then it's, it's just in general, some of the most obnoxious commercials, you know, you just, you know, your head almost wants to explode after a little bit. And then, of course, they up the volume when they come on, right? Uh, it's just, it reminds you of, 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 of just pop culture, if nothing else, how, how shallow and silly it is. And, and of course, that's what they're doing. They're trying to get to the lowest common denominator to sell their new iPhone or whatever it is. And so you get pop culture songs that, you know, make you want to gag. And then everything in the commercial is just, uh, wow, do I sound like an old man? Get off my lawn. <laughs> Where's my Garand? <laughs> I'm not really that get off my lawn sort of guy. It's just on some things I am. I taught middle school for 29 years and thoroughly enjoyed it. I miss the kids, you know. So I mean, I have a, a license. Uh, I have a I have some background, a little bit of credibility to prove I'm not that get off my lawn guy necessarily. Okay, because I I enjoy youngsters, and you know even the culture. You know I. And even their music, I had to put up with their music. Uh, it, uh, like school dances and different things were going on. It was okay, kind of thing. It's just that, I don't know, maybe things have gotten even more shallow uh, in the last seven years since I was uh, teaching. But you know, so much of culture, of course, is aimed at the average 13-year-old. It's all been that way for a long time. So, uh, you know, I, I do sound like the old man that I am, I guess. It's just, boy, the price you have to pay to, uh, to delve into anything uh, involving popular culture, it's murder. It really is, isn't it? <laughs> well, in the drug commercials, and they're not directed at 13-year-olds. Drug commercials are the worst, because they are directed at people like me and middle-aged people, uh, and they make me want to gag almost more. I understand trying to appeal to a 13-year-old girl or boy, you know, what you know what the commercial's gonna, gonna bring about, but uh, it is just so, I have remarked for years how interesting it is, really, uh, obnoxious, but interesting that drug companies will have a commercial on a drug that it's about some ailment that, uh, what, uh, one-tenth of one percent or less of people might ever uh, suffer or have some some weird thing that you'd have to search high and low to find somebody that has that. But yet, they'll run a, a 60 second commercial on that. High dollar commercial on this drug. And it's like, wow, what's wrong with that picture? You know, I mean, the whole, they, they in a way, they go against uh, the entire uh, concept of advertising really, and philosophy and approach you, know, you try to target your your commercials, you know, and spend your money wisely. And everything and it's like, wow, what's wrong with this picture? I, I, I mean, there's reasons for it you could go into, I'm sure. But on top of that, what makes them so obnoxious to me is, uh, and I'm sure some of you see this. It, it gets you to, they they're just uh, full of like '60s or '70s or '80s music classic rock music of some kind, right? And people just, you know, dancing around or acting happy about having this drug and taking this drug and, you know, uh, it's just, it's just, yeah, they just are something else. They really are. Again, thank God for DVRs is all I can say. It's all I can say. And, uh, you know, it's not so bad in the old days. I, th I don't know what year it was, but they, they deregulated, which I generally am all for. Almost any kind of deregulation, I'll take my chances. Uh, they deregulated uh, TV and commercials and all that. There was, for a long time, there could only be so many minutes of a commercial and a program and everything. And nobody likes commercials, but, but you know, you watch a half-hour show of some sort and you have a break for a commercial and be a couple of three quick commercials and you're back to the show, you know, in the old days. And uh, not that way now, is it? Uh, so, uh, so the advertisers, the 
the producers and all those people, they have figured out, I, get, I think they're wrong, but they probably think they have figured out what the limit is that someone will stand, will put up with in a commercial and watch that show. But I think they have misfigured. I'm sorry, when you have an equal amount of program and an equal amount of commercials, you've blown out that, that limit, I'm afraid. Yeah, you know, we think about that. We, we're, we're crazy not to have sponsors, of course. And uh, what if, if we had like, let's see, on average gun video, maybe 20 minutes or 25 minutes sometimes, what if we had like 12 or 13 minutes of commercials in there? Wow, wow. Some people don't even like the fact that we have sponsors. And part of that's just envy, but then part of it is, you know, you know, I mean, you know, commercials of any kind or advertising. This is like, okay, it's not what you are hoping to see, uh, especially uh, uh, too much of, right? But uh, wow, they have really overdone it. And in uh, those drug commercials, they just, they just blow me away. I think, wow, here's something that I, I, I don't know anybody that, that, that has this ailment and you have put millions of dollars per hour, probably, into advertising you know, this product. And I know part of that is because I was in the medical uh, sales area and publishing and different things, just because they don't have access to the doctors like they used to. They used to have an army of field uh, drug reps that would call on all the doctors and push the drugs and everything. And that has been limited over the years. And so because of that, and maybe other reasons, uh, they're going directly to the consumer. So they think that if I see enough commercials about what Predigen or whatever that is, I don't, you know, they're in your head. I don't even know what they are. I don't pay attention to what they're for because they're always some weird thing, it seems like. But uh, they think that, okay, when I go to the doctor, if I've seen a thousand commercials on uh, something that will make your hand more flexible and uh, I've develop something my hand doesn't feel right then when I go and see my doctor I'm going to say don't I need some of that whatever <laughs> so that's that's how they're getting you know to the doctors through us ah, I hate that I wish they would go back to uh, hiring drug reps and I wish the hospitals would let the drug reps go and talk to the doctors it was I enjoyed all those years when that was going on anyway I don't lie awake at night worrying about it it's just something that it, I noticed, and uh, I know some of you can identify with that. So, let me uh, let you go, and uh, anything else I needed to tell you uh, before we... Uh, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to shoot this thing a little bit more, can I? Just maybe a couple more shots, because I have a few rounds in this mag. Yeah, there we go. I want to shoot this. All right. So, pretty cool. Uh, again, it's interesting, in some states, well, not some states, but countries. You can, I think New Zealand, unless they've changed it, but uh, you could just buy a, a suppressor off the rack, you know, blister pack, because uh, they've written me and told me that. Uh, you're just like you'd buy a flashlight, you know. But in this country, oh boy, everybody thinks you're going to be a, an assassin, a hitman, if you've got a suppressor. <laughs> Let's take a couple of shots of this thing. <laughs> Boom. Oh man, got a ring on the last shot. I like this Glock 41. I don't shoot it enough. Uh, probably not many of you have a Glock 41. It's a little bit of a, a different sort of Glock because it's a little bigger. Uh, it's no bigger than a 1911, but it's got the thinner slides like the 30S. You know, it's got the nine millimeter thickness on the slide and it's a little bit lighter. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's a, I've, I've always liked it. I, I think this is, goes back, gosh, yeah. That's right, I think this is the last T&E gun we got from Glock. That means a borrowed gun from a manufacturer. Then I bought it. I sent him a check for it rather than sending the gun back. I think that was the last one. And uh, we just quit doing that with Glock. Uh, really with everybody, but with Glock, it was such a, such a hassle. Uh, do all the paperwork every time. Uh, like you were a, a new person. They didn't know you from anybody. <laughs> they may have changed that, but it was it was crazy. So anyway, uh, yeah, 
good to see you all and uh, I really will maybe let you go this time pretty soon and uh, one day I'm gonna I'm gonna have a vocabulary section and there's some vocabulary I want to talk about <laughs> that people misuse a lot also I want to always try to address the young people uh, Wow, if you're a young person, try not to let all the craziness get you down. It must be tough with school back and forth. You know, you're doing some virtual learning, quote unquote, part of the week. I know many of you, and then you're in, in the building part of the week, and, and the adults are playing politics with whether or not to close down the world or close down the schools, and you're a bit of a pawn in all of that, but you'll get through it. You get through it. Everybody, every teenager, young, even younger, every uh, student in the country is dealing with that on some level. And uh, if if you're getting behind, everybody's getting behind. Some of you are getting behind more than others, probably. But I guess the local libraries are open in about every city. So there's lots of excuses uh, for anybody to to not be educated or, or not learn something, but you know, it's all there, it's all there. Uh, if you have any technology at all, and if you don't go to the library, there are actually these things uh, called books that have a lot of information in them. If you have a phone, if you do have an internet connection, you know, the world is at your fingertips in terms of any information you want. I, I could probably Google, uh, algebra tutorial and probably come up with some uh, YouTube videos or, or whatever uh, about different and in fact I know you could because I don't when I was still teaching I think I was still teaching I was I, I looked up and and uh, some things on uh, things I was teaching and there were some people doing demonstrations about whether it's writing an essay or grammar or whatever and I actually created a channel for that and I was thought I can do better than that. I'm gonna do that. I can do some of that too, in addition to the gun videos. And I never did do it, but but uh, I mean, so I'm sure there's a lot of math. And just, there's all kinds of things. So anything you feel weak in or anything you're missing, I'm sure it's there, you know? Uh, so uh, I'm not gonna keep you much longer. I just got a text from my wife that lunch is ready. She's making lunch, being nice to me today, okay? You know how wives are, they're not very nice to their husbands usually, they're just mean, okay? So, of course, I deserve to be mean too, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna let you go, and uh, I've enjoyed shooting these firearms, and uh, I'm gonna shoot them some more today. And I will see you next Sunday. Again, if, uh, you, you, if you brand new, and I mean, just so many thousands of new subscribers every day. If you're not familiar, you didn't see the video on the announcement for the, the movie. Uh, again, uh, John and I, were we had small parts in the zombie movie, and uh, we posted a video on it called Whatever Happened to That Zombie Movie, is what I call it, I think. And so I'll remind you all uh, that, uh, about that. And uh, so, uh, it, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Uh, as usual, to be transparent, we get a little piece. You know, we get a little piece of, of that. So we hope you see it. You now that's part of part of our deal uh, uh, for being in it. So uh, we hope it does well, and we'll let you know. We'll keep you abreast of, of uh, where it's available you know, and that kind of thing. And we won't make you watch it. That's the that's that's where we stop. Okay. We don't believe in violence. We are not going to force anybody to buy that movie and watch it. You know, we talked about it, John and I. Should we force people to watch it? Should we force people to watch our videos? See, we really came to that conclusion years ago when uh, we started the channel. We said, you know, we could make people subscribe. We could force people to watch our videos. That would take care of it. Okay. And I talked him out of it, so no, let's don't. Let's let people make their own choices. It's just kind of the libertarian way, you know. So it worked out. So we're not going to force you either to watch this movie or to buy this movie. So I know a lot of you are relieved about that. <laughs> okay, good to see you all and good to talk to you as always. And 
we uh, really appreciate you more than, than we can say. Because again, as I, uh, a lot of new people, and, and, and again, you new folks, because the last week or two especially is an enormous number of people. Uh, if you've not seen one of these, go back and look at the others. And, and, uh, and the many, many times I try to express this, how appreciative we are of your all support and watching the videos are not slick nothing slick about them we just kind of be in ourselves for the most part and uh you know we we just uh oh yeah well if you knew people especially uh this is a sunday video i do a little shooting and it's kind of sunday shoot around you know it's a little different yeah more yakking that kind of thing and and some shooting uh just kind of the the format for the sunday shoot around and uh, that's just what it is. So this is not typical of most of our videos. If this is the first video you've seen, wow, it's pretty weird, right? But that's probably the case for some people, right? So yeah, it gets uploaded or something, or somebody mentioned Hickok 45. Oh, okay, somebody said that guy has at least half a brain. Uh, so they come and it's the first video you see. So of course, I'm not telling you that until the end of the video. So it doesn't do much good, does it? This is a little bit different than the other videos. Okay, so I will talk to you all later. And again, really do appreciate your support and supporting the people that support us. Uh, you know, keeps everything going. And uh, uh, yeah, I can't think of anything else to say. So I'm just gonna let you go. Y'all have a great week. Life is good.